This is Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity 2 Deadfire. We're back on a voyage, on a journey, on a voyage, on a journey. We're repairing our ship. We need to head down here. Where is this other bounty? Last seen leaving Port Maje and heading west of Maje Island. And we also need to map the archipelago by going to an island south of Port Maje. So everything's around Port Maje that we need to do. Here's Drake Blood Sands, the island that I named. Dude, they're actually repairing our shit really fast. Where is that asshole pirate? Well, I don't know. I just discovered that you can hold down the button. A Sila Wave Skipper doesn't sound like somebody I want to fuck with yet. I don't think she's a Principi anyway. I don't think she'll even attack me. This is Port Mahe Island again. So there's something down here to the south. Waves batter a splintered hull that doggedly refuses to sink. Whoever abandoned this may have left something behind. I was eating it from the pouch like an army ration, yeah. UK usually ban most stuff from the US, really? A shipwreck huddles in the crashing surf, its splintered beams rising like ribs from the water. The wreck appears abandoned. Sift through it. Take some time. And I found some ammunition supply. Continue searching. I found a tattered old flag. Continue searching. I found a rope and grappling hook. Continue searching. I found a flint and tinder. Continue searching. Continue searching. I found a, a cannon. We've searched the ship top to bottom. There's nothing of value left. Interesting. I still have the boons. Alright, she's... Oh, she's Principi and she's in a Voyager. She might kick my ass. Let's not. This is the Kangadi Islands. Apostor's Lament, Amira's Whisper, Temple of Tangaloa Ruins. Alright, I think this is the island that they wanted me to... What happens if you try to go off the edge of the map? The game just says, nope.
I can't get across this water right here. All right, let's see what Amira's whisper is. <clears throat> A light fog curls about your ankles. Breathless, whispering voices call to you from the darkness. They cry in half-uttered sentences, in moans, gurgles, screams. What few words you can make out among the chorus beg for mercy, for an end to their pain. Well, why wouldn't we step into this extremely welcoming fog? Wisps wind around your torso and cling to your skin. The cries become shouts and the chorus screams. The fog thickens until you see nothing but its swirling ghostly shape. Dark forms appear in the fog. They encircle you one moment and disappear the next. Let's see if, if Shodi can draw the spirits into her lantern. Line up, y'all! Time for the afterlife! I think it's time for you, Lost Lot, to find the light. This way now! That's right! Aloth apparently likes that because it's dutiful. The dense fog swirls into Shodi's lantern. You hear the faint tink of metal striking the ground. You bend down to examine it and discover a small necklace. The stone at its center sparkles with the red of a fire's dancing flame. Unhindered by the fog, you are now free to continue exploring the island. We gained Eloise's locket. It was put into your stash. Crafted from silver and inlaid with a bloodstone, this necklace bears a short inscription in the Deeran, identifying its owner, the former first mate of the Impostor's Lament. Within its compartment rests a curled lock of light brown hair. Spiritual essence infuses the pendant, lending both it and its wearer an otherworldly air. Accuracy against spirits and intellect. Well, I think we already all have necklaces that we prefer over that. So... Yeah, it forwarded her storyline quest because her quest is to absorb a bunch of shit into her lantern. Shodi harvests a group of souls on an uncharted island. Some strange concoction of different coke from America. Yeah, I don't know. I think there's all kinds of weird types of coke. Or Pepsi or whatever other beverages. There's like 10 flavors of Mountain Dew now. I can't even keep up with it. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. Canada has ketchup flavored chips, so we can hardly talk. Ew, that sounds nasty. It's the grossest. It doesn't sound good. Waves batter a splintered hull that doggedly refuses to sink. Whoever abandoned this may have left something behind. You stumble upon an ancient shipwreck. Its sails hangs from the main mast like cobwebs. Shredded by cannon fire and vicious winds. The ship's hull is cracked and bow, but there may still be something inside worth salvaging. Got some medicine. Didn't need it, but okay. Got some lager. I'll take it. Got an imperial long gun. Nice. Got some repair supplies. That maxes me back out there. Got some... After all the trouble I went to to get some of these... This stupid Principi flag... 
I could have just come here and gotten one with no trouble whatsoever. Just a free one laying here. Nothing of value left. Temple of Tangaloa ruins. I think we get some water here. Yay, water. Just what everybody wants more of. Oh, some fruit though. Fruit's good. Alright, let's go in these ruins and try not to get destroyed. People there lap love it, I guess. Sour crisp with a hint of sweet. Nox says hashtag nasty ass chips. Ketchup goes with everything. I don't think ketchup goes with everything. Ketchup only goes with a few things as far as I'm concerned. Got the care package because apparently I had to try Jaffa Cakes. I've heard people go on and on about Jaffa Cakes. Always Jaffa Cakes. I've never had Jaffa Cakes. What are Jaffa Cakes like? Were they were they any good, Jen? They were not good? <laughs> That's funny. Ahead of you lie the ruins of an ancient complex. As you near the tumbled-down stone entrance, you notice several curious drawings scrawled across the stone in a flaking brown paint. You bend down to get a better look and discover that the drawings depict violent images of decapitations, dismemberings, hangings, and sundry other terrors. Well, why wouldn't we enter this perfectly safe-seeming ruin? Light from distant torches flickers on the ruined walls. Unintelligible words float to you on a breeze that reeks of carrion and the metallic tang of blood. Tangy orange jelly with chocolate covered soft bistic. Ew. I don't like orange plus chocolate. And I don't really like orange flavored things in general. I like actual orange juice. And to a lesser extent, actual oranges. But most orange-flavored things are gross. And orange-flavored plus chocolate. Ew. Ew, ew. Ew. Take some fake orange flavor and mix it with crumbly cookies and cheap chocolate. And there you go. Wow. They should put that right on the commercial. You really sold it, Jen. <laughs> you really sold it. Okay, we found a cool little dungeon here. Good thinking. Cannon shot and repair supplies. The thing is, we're full up on those. So if I take these, they're just gone. They're just wasted. So I'm just gonna leave them there, in case I ever want to come back and get those. I mean, I don't lose anything by leaving them there, because I can't take them anyway. There's a lot of blood and grossness going on. Fat bubbles thick on the surface of this pot. The rising steam smells sweetly of meat. Okay. I have a bad feeling about this place. A very bad feeling. Oh! I guess I was right to have a bad feeling, because apparently we're in a fight. Crazed Marauder coming at us. That guy didn't last long. Is he the only one? Nope, he's not the only one. Captain Angfor has a skull over his head. 
76%. Let's see if we can charm, uh, dominate Captain Ang for. Oh, they, this fight just went into ogre time. They've got a fucking ogre. Okay, hold on. Let's charm the ogre. Rips. All right, the ogre is charmed. The captain is still dominated, so I've pretty much taken over. I'm pretty much running this show here. Crazed priest, how crazy are you gonna be when I sunbeam you? Let's retarget that so that it dares not in it. Just so start shooting. Ogres can. I think we, all the non. Yeah, all the enemies are gone except for the ones that I have charmed. That's only gonna last 6.5. That's gonna last 10.6. So let's pile on some pain on this dude. Finish them. On the captain. That was easy enough. Okay, everybody on the ogre. What? He's no longer robust or tenacious. Just for fun, I want to use this because I never actually cast it. That spell's not that cool. Iconic projection, I healed a little bit. I hit the ogre for five damage? What? It says it's gonna do 18. Oh, minus 75% for no penetration. Because the spell only has a penetration of None? It has no penetration at all? Oh, that spell is ass. It's ass, I say. Well, whatever. Let's just kill this guy. Jibbed. The gravy makes the cheese melt. It's not just fries with gravy. Cannibals. Ogre time? Ogre time. Fries and cheese, or fries and gravy, but together? Actually, I've never had it, but it sounds kind of good. It sounds like it could be kind of good. It's for healing mostly. Yeah, but I thought it was like healing and it would also do damage to the enemy, but... Mm -hmm. Oh, Jody wants to talk. 17 freeze damage sounds pretty useful. But if it literally has no penetration... Then that means on every fucking enemy, it's gonna do piss poor damage. Mule kicks the ogre. Mule kick crit the ogre for 38. Nice. Because it's gonna have a minus 75% on it due to no penetration. Oh, wait. No, it does have penetration. Look. It says it has 7.8 penetration. It has a 7 base penetration. Okay, so it's not as bad as I thought. The ogre just had high armor. It has a 7 base penetration. I don't know why it doesn't say that here. But, whatever. It's a mess. Sounds like Canada. I would definitely try it. I would definitely try it. Ogre Pirate. Here we have an Ogre. We've defeated one. Some strong resolve. Some strong will. Ogres are large, thick-skinned creatures, standing between 10 and 12 feet tall. They are heavily muscled and typically attired in the furs or skins of their prey. Clubs, axes, and maces made of bone or wood are their preferred weapons. 
Despite their natural intelligence, ogres' volatile temperaments have historically prevented them from concentrating long enough to create anything of significant cultural value. Most live semi-nomadic, secluded lives in the wilderness, where they are less likely to encounter others. The only time they reliably come together is during the mating season, which often does almost as much to reduce their numbers as it does to replenish them. Ogres with a more peaceful streak take particular pains to avoid contact with others of their kind. On the rare occasions that ogres are found working together, they are almost always operating under the direction of an ogre matron. Ogre matrons are even larger than male ogres, but tend to be less aggressive toward their own kind. Where ogres have banded together, they have often represented an insurmountable threat to other kith. While this is a direct sequel to the first game, but it's not all the... Most of the characters from the first game didn't come through. Just three. Just Aloth, Palagina, and Adair. And then there's one, two, three, three new companions in this game. Shodi here, and then there's... There's a couple others, Seraphin and Takehu, that are new to this game. Kith meat? Kith meat! That's per- that's Shirland Green! It's made of people! It gives you a minus five diplomacy. Yeah, I can smell the human on your breath. Oh yeah, and Maya. And Maya. So there's four new companions in this. Plus the three from the other game. A slab of kith meat. Its resemblance to pork is uncanny. It would take a brave or perhaps deranged soul to explore the subtleties of its flavor and texture. Crew morale. If you feed the crew human meat, their morale goes down. That's pretty funny. I like how I just casually take it. All right. Shodi wants to talk to me. Well, hi. Seems like an appropriate time and place. Tell me what's on your mind. How are you feeling? Have you suffered any recent nightmares? They're there in my head when I sleep. Sometimes I can taste them the on same the back thing of she said tongue. before. It's best. But what can I do? She you didn't for? apparently yeah. really want to Tell talk about anything mind. because they're there, and sometimes I can That's taste exactly them on what the back she always says. A fine pistol, a scroll. Oh, a journal. Angfor. Oh, that's the person we just killed, Captain Angfor. Three Inauten, 2827 AI. I have found this water-stained notebook at the bottom of my satchel, and now, having no use for it, I must record my thoughts, or I fear I will go mad in the solitary confinement of my own head. Months have passed, and still we are stranded on this cursed island. What few supplies we had with us at the time of our calamity have dwindled away to little more than dust and crumbs. When it became clear that we would be trapped on this island for some time, we began to ration our food. It was half rations at first, but as the days wore on and help became ever less a possibility and ever more a dream, we took only one meal a day, then one meal every two days. Fresh water, at least, is plentiful. It bubbles up from a crack in the stone near the ruins. No doubt it is pushed to the surface by some unseen force of Vulcanism. Yeah, that Vulcanism. She's talking to me, but say nothing new. Game does that fake new dialogue thing a lot. Nice. I should have liked to have had my instruments on hand to record its rate of flow and volume, but those are long since gone, likely resting at the bottom of the sea. Our numbers shrink day by cursed day. Always now my clothes smell of rancid meat, of sweat and smoke. The jerky we made from Carol's thigh has gone off. We had thought he might survive the amputation, but he passed away in the night two days ago from a fever in his blood. 
16 Prayatin, 2827 AI. We have better learned how to cure our meat, but our blades have gone dull, and we have only seawater with which to cleanse them. None have survived an amputation since Carol's tragic passing, so we no longer bother with the practice. More's the pity. I was becoming an old hand at it. Eloise was lost to us today. That's whose necklace we got. It pains me to write the words, though her passing comes as no surprise. She drew the shortest read. Yeah, yeah, they're cannibals, Jen. They're stuck here with no food. They're eating each other. That's why I found human meat on one of the on one of them. Her necklace I intended to keep, but it has gone missing since her death. I'd always thought it suited her, that the stone matched the light in her eyes. I wanted to remember that light. Perhaps someone is hiding it, though I do not know why they would do me such an unkindness. I was meant to have it. She never said as much, but I know. I will perform a search of the other's belongings when next I have the midnight watch. Woe betide the thief. 13 Majotin, 2827 AI. A chill wind has found us. It blows ceaselessly across the aisle, whipping our shelters into disarray and peppering our meals with sand. We took shelter in the nearby ruins, though I am loath to do it. Oh, I'm reading these backwards. This one happens last. Wait, no. Well, I don't know what the order of these weird-ass months are. This has to be... Oh, no, they were eating each other before they got to these ruins. I get it. We take shelter in the nearby ruins, though I am loath to do it. Always that place has seemed to me befouled by some unfriendly spirit, for I hear whispers when the wind blows. They cry for mercy, for salvation. Another of the crew has disappeared this morning. Some suspect he tied stones to his wrists and walked himself into the sea, but they are wrong. I saw him walk while he was dreaming, with jerky movements not his own. He wandered deep into the ruins and did not return. Majot, and you believe that's mid-autumn? So few of us remain. I envy them, the departed. Their souls are returned to the wheel and free to find new lives to lead. We unlucky few receive no such boon. And that is what we have given them. A gift. We suffer so that they might be free. Arlander says we might fashion a raft large enough to escape this place. He is mad. We belong to this isle now, as it belongs to us. And now you truly belong to this isle because your dead bodies will rot here. So apparently if you get shipwrecked on one of these islands, you're kind of fucked. Because there's no food and then you have to start eating each other. Be fouled? You were eating your friend while he was alive. Well, yeah, but, you know, he consented to it, presumably. If I was a real bastard, I'd make my crew eat kith meat. But, I'm not. You know... Oh, I don't have the book about the calendar. It was for sale in the shop, but I didn't buy it, because I've already I already read it in the first game. I don't remember what it said that well. Kith meat recipe? Alright, how to prepare, how to serve man. Here we go. The paper is ragged edged and stained with grease. Notes in a barely legible hand detail the preparation of a dish from the cook's childhood called Sweet Tongue Terrine but substituted with meat of an unusual provenance. Hashtag meat of an unusual provenance. This is some Chapel of Lights shit right here. Dude, this is like Sunless Sea. You can taste him right now because you probably have a piece of him. At the bottom, someone has scrawled, Make for Aeolina and June when I get back home. Oh, God. 
kith meat? How much does kith meat sell for? I'm just asking for a friend. It's not even worth any money. I can't even take that back to town and be like, Hey, would you like to purchase some delicious, delicious kith meat? Dude, these people have a lot of meat. They've got a blood-soaked grimoire. Nice. Aloth, you can have that. A fine rod. Does Aloth know how to use rod? He does have rod. Every time, but hits enemies around the target. He could use that and oh wait, he's got a special scepter here though. We don't want to. We want to use his special scepter. It's like it's got a tag saying, I'm Kith Meat. We're not eating his jerked fucking leg right next to him. What would happen if you ate your own meat? I mean, I guess it would nourish you, right? A fine wand. Bones scored by jagged cuts and picked clean of meat and marrow lie in a disorganized... Oh, dude, look how many of their people they've eaten, though. An antidote and some coral snuff. There's a guy tied up here, and he's still alive. Red-handed, huh? Why so red? Dude, look at... Look how much blood is there. Forbidden flesh pie. Heavily seasoned kith meat, ground and baked into a greasy crust. The strong spices cover up the unsavory taste, but the knowledge will stay with you forever. Like the little signs on the buffet. Plus two power level, corpse eater only. Corpse eater must, oh, there's, I forgot, there's a subclass you can pick for your character in this game called corpse eater. If you're a barbarian, you can pick the corpse eater subclass and you can literally heal yourself by eating bodies in the middle of combat. So corpse eater would love them some of this. Dude, they have some cuttlefish right here. More meat stashed away in the wall. Blood friggin' everywhere. Some of the bones in this pile are cracked and bleached with age. Aquamarines and some silver. Well, I guess we're going to set this guy free. I don't know if he'll attack us. Reward us. Join us. Hmm? You find a middle-aged dwarf tied to a post, a pile of bloody refuse scattered at his feet. His beard is a matted mess, and his face is streaked with dirt. Despite his haggard state, he twists against his bonds when you approach. Lear Shaw Nickers, you're just in time. Another moment more and I would have been dinner. This guy seems legit. Corpse eating seems like it might affect company morale. Yeah. Who are you? Jordu, red-handed of the imposter's lament. Well... Formerly of the imposter's lament. He laughs a little too loudly. Something of a lifelong deckhand I am. 
picked up cooking in the last few months, too. Meat's my speciality, on account of the, well, you know, the business here with the cannibalism. Oh, the business here, we just casually, casual cannibal meets his speciality on account of the, you know, the business here. No big deal. What happened here? It's a right sorry tale, I'm afraid to say. Our ship, a beautiful ship she was too, ran aground in a storm. Waves so high we couldn't see a damn thing, you understand? Come to discover this here island's about as barren as an ancient lecher's bed. Not a scrap of nothing edible on it. And none of us were especially keen to take our turn about a wheel, so... He trails off, unable to meet your eye. As the months wore on and no one came looking for us, we started running low on crew and, uh, victuals. I think while few of us were left here at the end, might have gone a little nutty. Well, this guy seems like a reasonable person to return to society. Ah, <sighs> my wrist, thank you mightily. He takes a moment to flex and bend his hands, working the circulation back into them. His lips twist into a grimace when he runs his fingers over the deep bruises the ropes left. Say, you got a ship? Couldn't get here without one, right? You by chance have any spots open for an old dwarf like me? I might not look it, but I'm a deft hand with a rigging. Can even cook some. You are not cooking anything on my ship. But... Welcome to the crew of the Sea Cow. I owe you one, Captain. A debt like this. I'm not sure I'll ever be able to repay you. You like stew? I no. got a great recipe. Flavor's real different, like nothing you ever tasted. I'll make it for you. No, we you know, do And thanks. You never get to make stew on my ship. He gives you a quick wink and a nod before heading back to the ship. He has diverse culinary skills. Jordu Red-Handed is now available to crew your ship. Alright, he goes into... Oh, he's a seasoned deckhand. Alright, so we're going to replace... Arena with him... When the time comes. When we get, when we get back to port... Seasoned deckhand. I mean, we don't need him to Mother Sharp rocks a seasoned deckhand too, so Cannibal Lecter style. So we got our own cannibal cook. Glad we came in here. What a nice place. I think we get to name this island now because we've now cleared it and it's our island. Well, it's not really our island, but it's ours to cartographize. Alright. Island name. This island's name is Feaster's Bounty. The devs put a little vent in with him cooking. Next stop, jerky him. Next step, forbidden flesh pie. Excuse me. I gotta clear every bit of this map, you understand. 
Oh, a rice farm. Nice. I love finding rice farms. Some salvage. Alright, we're down to 90 on the morale, so I'm going to go ahead and switch them back to rice and ale. What's up, Askel? How you doing? Welcome. Let's buy all that cheap rice. All that cheap rice wine. We've got a shimmer scale for sale. We've already seen one of those. Wait, we've sold these things to a rice farm before. I'll take all the cheap tar loaf as well. We will sell unto them some hide armor and a fine wand, a dagger, some coral snuff, a stiletto. Robe, some leather armor, morning star, archivist, fine rod, fine mail, sword, a polax, couple of hatchets, we we'll sell a club, a fine pistol, a scroll. I'll we'll sell you an imperial long gun, and I'm gonna hold on to that locket for now. Ooh, 2,000. We're making some monies. We're over 10k now. We're over 10k now. I don't know why some rice farmers would want to buy all that. Why are you keeping the special pie? You never know when you might need it. Don't judge me. You never know when you might need it, okay? Rice wine. Why do you hate guns in this game? I, I don't know, I just do. I mean, if I had Maya in my party, I'd have her use a gun. Because she's really good with them. Kangati Islands. There's a little something something. Some ale. For some reason on this island, there's just a weird cache of ale. Fire merchant, a Sela wave skipper. This looks like it's probably the island I'm looking Ah, yes, Mariel the Mad. That's who I'm looking for. Let's grab some fruit. Some water. It's a quick save, because we're about to get into a scrap. Mariel the Mad is apparently... A mad animancer with bloody experiments. There's one thing worse than scientists, it's magical scientists. Manamancer. <laughs> Oh shit. Oh shit! Some of these things are way high level. Three skulls. 
But the quest isn't three skulls. It's no skulls, which is weird. Ready to... Yeah, I know. You guys are... You guys are angry up there. Oh, he's casting spells up there. He didn't give a fuck. Adair really doesn't give a fuck. These revenants don't seem to be immune to my bullshit. Charm for 30 seconds. Eighty-seven percent chance to hit. Dominated for twenty-seven point six seconds. Eighty-nine percent chance to hit. Let's dominate this revenant. Dominated for twenty-eight point nine seconds. Nice. These other ones don't seem to want to come down here and get involved, which I'm actually super happy about. Let's die of charm. Let's die of blessing some people here on my team. Let's not all forget about this one. This one's not going to be on our side forever. That turned out to be way easier than it looked like it was going to be. Dude, Aloth with the 71 point necrotic lance. Nice job, elf boy. They look so much harder. You look at them and they're like, oh, three skulls over their head. And then we just took them to fuck the school, dude. We literally just started a second career as school bus drivers. Zombies don't have will defenses since they're mindless. I figured they would just be immune to those kind of mind attacks, but apparently not. Uh, stone of power, fine padded armor, a fine rod. Okay. Mariel's dead. Tell me about this uh, stone of power. Plus one intellect and it gives you power surge. Plus two power levels for the duration of the fight. That's not bad. The thing is, we all kind of have necklaces that we like. <clears> hmm. <throat> probably be good for him. Does he really need max health? I'm just gonna have him hold on to the other one. Now we have Meryl the Mad's head.
It was actually really easy to hit them with the mind attack, though. Well, it's a cypher, though. Cypher's not strictly a mind. Cyphers deal with souls. Cyphers are attacking your soul. So, And since those vessels do still have a soul within them, or part of a soul, she could take control over that, and it doesn't matter whether they actually have a mind, per se, or not. So that's it for Mariel the Mad. Mariel's days of carnage and experimentation are over. A boko at the wild mare in Queen's birth will pay a bounty for evidence of her death. Let's see what's here with this abandoned village. Between failed settlements and discarded Huana villages, the Deadfire Islands are spotted with promising ruins. You come upon an abandoned Huana village. The few of its huts that haven't been blown across the Deadfire countryside lay in ruins. Trees felled by strong winds litter the village's periphery. A handful of structures still stand, however, and might hide something worth salvaging. We search. We found 14 pi fire kelp find what food hasn't yet perished found some palm stones found some pyrite searched it all okay good that was productive I have charted both of the islands in this region. Sansa will want an update on my progress and the opportunity to fill out his charts. He'll be waiting for me at his shop in Queen's Birth and Negataka. So I've completed one, two, three quests on this little voyage. I think I'm gonna go kill well-weathered well Cormio while I'm out and about. I'm gonna leave that there because it's just gonna give me supplies that I don't need. But what I should say is I'm gonna see if well-weathered Cormio attacks me or not. Oh, he won't attack me now! Interesting. So, he used to attack me on sight. Okay, that's not something I'm fucking with. He used to attack me on sight because I hadn't dealt with Ben, Captain Benwith at, at Fort uh, Deadlight. So apparently now that I've killed Captain Benwith, that dude's like, nope, I don't want any piece of this. So now I think it's a good time to head back. To Nekataka. All right, let's check this little island out real quick. There's a burial site over here. The Wana tribes traditionally heap their dead onto pyres or give their bodies to the deep sea. But mounds like these suggest that orangas of honor, wealth, and distinction were buried nearby. While wandering the Deadfire countryside, you stumble upon a site used frequently for ritual cremations. Beside the flat expanse of earth where a pyre might have been sits a small crypt full of beautiful baskets containing cremated remains. Take some time to search. Found 19 baby pearls. Found 3 aquamarines. Found 2 scrolls of blessing. 
Found three, two scrolls of nature's mark. There's nothing left. Casual grave robbing. As you travel northwest, you discover a broad channel separating you from the flat expanse of a sandy islet. A wooden bridge spans the waterway, easily wide enough to accommodate a cart and horse. A crowd throngs the bridge, an eclectic menagerie of clean-coated valians, a mawa in bright and colorful robes, and even the odd orlan. Down the hill, by the water's edge, a small cluster of a mawa have gathered. Let's approach the Amawa near the water. From the shore, you see that the channel's current seems significantly stronger than it had from before, perhaps fed by the recent storms. The Huana gathered here, garbed in thin robes and little else, watch as you approach. One steps forward, her own gown in far brighter colors than those around her. She cants her head to the side. You look bedraggled, stranger. As if the sea spat you upon our shore. What for you come here? To watch? What's this all about? The arc of her hand describes first the swimmers, then the waters, then the islet on the other side. They challenge the Osa Channel. The rains fell, and the waters run swift. They must swim swifter yet. For each who finishes, there is honor. For the one who wins, there is more. I'd like to examine the competitors. Perception and insight I'm really good at. The largest of them, a bald woman, is all muscle. She'd be menacing in a fight, but in the water the bulk might slow her down. One of them, a man with tightly curled blonde hair, combines lean muscle with a compact frame. As he stretches, he watches the water as if it were an old friend. You doubt that Third, a gangly teen, should even be here. A light wind might carry him away. Who stands the best chance of winning? She chuckles, a hand flat upon her stomach. The one that got the flavors, as sure as the tide. But you don't miss her glance toward the wiry blonde Amawa. I wonder if I can get a dare to join the race, because he'd be really good. I'd like to join the race. Watch your only check? Oh, no. I wonder if I get party assist on this. How come I don't have athletics? I should have athletics one right now because of that buff. Several of the gathered who want to chuckle. The woman merely smiles, bowing her head slightly. Challenging Osa, it is always done by a Mawa to prove strength and stamina in the water. I stay afraid it may be too much for another kith. I thought the Huana were traditionally a welcoming people. She bows her head. Then what welcome would we provide if we fed our guests unknowing to Nagati? When her gaze returns to yours, she bears a small smile. But you are not unknowing, I say. She nods and motions you toward the channel. Then go join the others at the water's edge. Leave your clothes upon the rocks and they will warm you after. Alright, let's go to the water and strip down. This isn't going to go well. You shrug off your brine-crusted clothes and lay your belongings on the rocks. My watcher, you sure are. I mean, what I. Well, that. Uh. G good luck! Red faced, Shodi clears her throat behind her fist, but she doesn't break her stare. Shodi be creeping. You spring off the stone and crash into the cool, crisp salt water with the other swimmers. Partial success. As hard as you kick and pull, the current pushes back with the strength of a bear. You keep pace with the Huana, though your muscles burn with the effort. One of the Huana, you notice, struggles to remain in the pack. No, he's struggling just to stay above water. His desperate gasps carry down the channel. I'm gonna help him to shore. 
You wrap an arm around the struggling swimmer, and he has the wherewithal not to struggle against you as you swim him towards land. You pull yourself onto the rocky shore and help him up behind you. The large, bald woman pulls ahead and reaches the goal first. The crowd roars as she walks under the far shore, fists raised victoriously. The young swimmer squeezes your arm. Many thanks, Akira. The crowd on the bridge thins and the commotion dies down. Your journey continues. My journey continues. See? I knew it! I told you! That fucking in buff, those in buffs are gone. And I most certainly did not rest. They do go away. After a while. It's a long time, but they go away. Whereas the food buffs do not. Now maybe that's a bug. Maybe they're not supposed to go away. That's disappointing. Very disappointing. Well, now that our buffs are gone... Guess we might as well eat some food. Oh, no, we're fine. We don't need to eat some food right now. The small fish fishing village looks prosper enough to prosperous enough to welcome trade with outsiders and locals alike. Uh, I don't want to buy any of this crappy fish. Maybe I'll buy that cheap silver fin. Maybe I'll buy that cheap hagfish too, why not? Back to the ship. Juana is at one. Royal Deadfire Company is pissed at me for some reason. I haven't even done anything with them yet. Maybe, oh, was what's-her-name? Was Biakara a Royal Deadfire Company captain? Probably because you helped Valian. That's also possible. Finder Sanctum. I haven't been there yet.
That place looks dangerous. Dead Fire Company. So this is the island that uh, Tikawara's on. I mean, not Tikawara, but Nekataka. And it looks pretty big. Stomper Rodul. Just clearing a little fog away. It still seems like a pretty small area that I've explored, given the size of this map. Almost out of ale. Before I go into the city, I'm going to try going to my deck, and hopefully this doesn't cause a crash, as it did last time. Sima Casita for taking me on. He trots along beside you, tail head high. That's my little Zarip. Chitupatek. Galley on this tub ain't half bad. Hey, he's holding like a map now since I made him the navigator. Beardles here. Not quite like the open ocean. If you be having a tick, Cap, I'll be thinking that uh, if I be dragging you into these depths, you deserve the full sounding. Maya smirks and folds her arms. This is about Romaro, I take it. I'm happy to listen. When I were a wee swabby, fresh to the sea, it were Romaro that showed me the ropes and rigging. More than that, he, uh, kept his weather eye open for me. He plucks at the fur at his elbow. The sea be a right poxy oar on occasion, and life aboard the sorcerer, that and more. Malnash, our ship hunter, she were all, uh, wet and bothered for doing me harm. And Romaro, uh, he protected me. Mentored me, too. Learned me letters and navigation. He told me all this. Handed down the Principe traditions. In time, we became close as kin or closer. And the sorcerer, my family. Why, Cap? Nay, we never shared a bunk. Not that. Eh, fair. Eat more than one swabby be on the old salt of the fur. Aye. Do right by it, and I won't be regretting it. Ahoy, Captain. What can I do you for? What? I can just flirt with them? Why the fuck would I flirt with Seraphin? Not just no, but hell no. Tell me about Romaro. Aye, sure. He nods. When I were a wee swabby, fret the sea oh, by I can't. That's enough. Goodbye. There's no way I'm flirting with a little fucking gross blue Ewok motherfucker. Your orders, Captain? Hmm, guess I can't talk to her about anything. Let's see who's below decks. I kinda wanna talk to that Constantin guy. Cause I've never actually talked to him since he joined me. Sailor hums happily. Yeah. 
Tell me what's on your mind. They're there, and sometimes. Sure thing. Watch. She always has. Berta, my ogre cook. No offense, Captain, but your gunners can't shoot for shit. Ahoy, Captain. Fine sailing, aye? That's my pale elf guy that I hired. Is there something you wanted to talk about? You only have to ask. Okay, that's it. Eld Engram is here. Need something, Captain? Yes? Apparently we're fine on Aloth. I got time. And Adair. Constantine. What are we standing rail for? Apparently I can't really talk Let's to him about on. anything. Okay. I shall. I am glad to see you in good health, my lady. Okay. Not much in the way of new conversation to be had on the ship. Back into Nekataka we go. So we're going to start. By going to the Wild Mare. That's where one of the people that gave us bounties was. Also, I can re-get my buffs. Now, what can I do? You see anything? Oh, now I can go to Constantine's room and get these buffs. I mean, these seem pretty good, but I'm not spending no 800. So also, I really like the private dance room buff. This delight. Abaco raises his tankard and winks. She joins the goddess of death in the beyond. My first bounty to pay off. An exciting day for us both. Abaco passes you a small pouch of coins. 1400 copper. Maybe it's not much, but as I make more deals, more pyres will be available, Huck. What bounties do you have available now? Ah. I finally managed to land the rights to a bounty of value. You may not like it. There is a thirsty drake who roosts near an oasis northeast of Magia Island. An important site for refilling canteens. I already killed that drake. The local tribes call him Purakeo, after a sea dragon of legend. Even so, they have no love for this water thief. Here's your thirsty drake. To think that such a magnificent creature could also be a water hoarding pest. Dragons are a complicated bunch. He half the head and looks deeply into its eyes before passing you payment. Another 1500. Agrasima, my friend. You will let me know if you are interested in more work, Ak. What bounties do you have available now? A marauder gang boss called Nomu broke free of custody along with the rest of his plunder buddies. It is said they wasted no time getting up to their old tricks. Prison is too kind for a pirate. So there is a bounty on Nomu's head. He and his ilk fled to the wilderness north of Neketaka. I'll return with his head. Farewell. Raider and gang leader Nomu the Marauder escaped custody with the rest of his crew. They fled to the wilderness northwest of Nekataka, leaving carnage in their wake and a bounty open to collect. Nomu and his reconvened gang were last spotted in the wilderness northwest of Nekataka. I killed the Drake Purikau and claimed the bounty reward for Maboko. I defeated Mariel and claimed the reward for her bounty. Ado, you return. I 
Back to Analis. Have you come to hear some verse? I have, actually. Do you know Skilba? She ship at dawn. The wind. Heard it. I. Yeah. You. Heard it. Tavern music diversion. sound like board scratching. Yes. Visit me anytime, my friend. Dude, why is our order all fucked up? <laughs> I hope you're not expecting much. Now I've got all them buffs I like. Exception 22. Gather your party before venturing forth. What is the fucking problem here? Actually, I don't need to go back downstairs. I think we could just go out this door. Alright, so we'll go back and talk to the person for the next bounty, who I think is standing over kind of by the, um... Kind of over by the... The Alien Trading Company. Yeah, here she is. Fuck, my little privateer. You have news for me? Anya holds her arms and tips her head. I dealt with Biakara. Belfetto, a fitting test of your skills and a promising beginning for us both. She winks and passes you a small pouch of coins. 1,600 more copper. It goes without saying that I have more work for you if you have the space for more coin. Anya chuckles to herself. What other bounties do you have available? The company is always eager to hunt pirates. My contacts have won by the name of Veen in their spyglass. Enia hesitates before speaking up again. Veen is a Vithrak, if such things matter to you. Gets in your head, they say. I'll take the bounty. Gelade. You can catch up to Veen as he sails the Dao Reckless far east of Neketaka, past the Kuau Rikuhu Islands, no doubt thinking himself beyond our reach. Enya grins to herself and nods. Ah, Rakuhu, the twin eel god, again, right. Questions? 
Well, the Queen's birth ship hunt. Enjoy the luck. But so. Yeah. Dick. Oh god, I can now make forbidden flesh pie and corpse loaf. Corpse loaf. Oh, that's fucking disgusting. I can make it out of vessel flesh? Oh, that's gross as fuck. Contraction of go with the gods. Chorus. Alright, we're going in here. Just because I'm too curious. We've got to go into this place which smells of shit. Reek of sewage. Carefully squeeze through the opening, stealing yourself for what comes next. Uh oh. Did not make the Constitution. Aloth and Sekiruna failed it. In the darkness of the tunnel, you hear quiet retching. You press on with offered sympathies. As you progress through the tunnel, a change in the air pressure catches your attention. There is an opening above your head. The walls are slick and coated with waste, but you find handholds carved in either side of a narrow passage leading up. You haul yourself out of the pit toward freedom. And out through the toilet of the Valiant Trading Company headquarters. What? Why would I even want to do such a thing? That's fucking gross as shit. Dude, no. We don't want to haul ourselves out through the toilet of the... That's... Oh. No. That's just... No. Let's not climb through there. It's good to know that we can. If for some reason we need to get into that building and we can't get through the front door for some reason, it's good to know that we can go through the shitter if, if it's absolutely necessary. But let's just not right now. Look, I was just curious, but it turned out I wasn't that curious. Curiosity regretted. Uh -huh. We're not going in there, shitter. We're getting real close to leveling, too, which is nice. Maybe when we turn in this quest to the cartographer. I forgot who you were. You return! Can I be of service? Oh, yeah, you told me about the bathhouse. Uh, back to Sansa's map emporium. To let Sansa know that we charted two islands for him. Welcome back, welcome back. It is a pleasure to see you once again. Tell me, how is the sailing? Smooth? Nothing to delay your expedition, I hope. How might I assist you? I've got some material for your book. Ah, how exciting! Let's see here. Goodness, that's not what I was expecting. And so close to Porto Maggi. You've done wonderfully. Ah, oh, this book will be the best thing since Cassini's adventures, and that was all romantic rubbish. Here, your pay, my friend. We're only getting started, of course. 
There's more to see. I'm getting a lot of copper from all these quests. Fikawara next, I think. How does that strike you? It's a little Huana village out to the southeast. Three islands this time, all nameless and unloved. They form a little triangle around Tikawara, if you squint. I'll be waiting. Okay. Hey, a couple of us did level up. I turned over my survey of the islands around Port Maje to Sansa and received my reward. Sansa, the excitable cartographer I met in Queen's birth, wants to compile a complete guide to the islands of the Deadfire, but he can't do it on his own. I've made some progress, but there's still a lot to explore. Sansa, the cartographer in Queen's Birth, asked me to make a survey of the uncharted islands of the Deadfire Archipelago. This time, he pointed me toward the islands surrounding the Huana village of Tikawara. This quest is three levels higher than your character's current level. Success is unlikely. Oh yeah, we gotta go find Persa in the gullet. We gotta go back to Martino. On this ancient temple, or a top that must be that that must be that um, Oathbinder's sanctum place, which means it's probably an old temple of Wodica, which makes sense because he had a Wodica. Yeah, it even says temple dedicated to Wodica because Oathbinder, right? Wodica. Still trying to figure out a food source for the. The gullet. Still gotta go to Pokokohara. Nomu and his reconvened gang. I like the idea of a fucking gang of marauders convening. <laughs> this session of the looting and pillaging is called to order. Uh, excuse me, sir. Uh, Robert's rules uh, states that we must first loot two story buildings before looting one story buildings. Uh, point of order. <laughs> Reconvened. Oh, yeah. The prince wants me to go back and tell him about... What I discovered too with the pirates. I got a lot, man. I got a lot of things to do, and we got some level ups. How much money we got? Ooh, fifteen point six. We're getting closer to getting that new ship that I want. That beautiful new ship. Hagfish is zero. Morale food. We throw that up there. What I need is more rice, wine, or ale. I need to find somewhere that sells cheap ale, or at least unlimited ale. Welcome back, welcome back. How might I assist you? Certainly. Sixteen K. Getting real close to that ship. All right, let's do some leveling up here. Sekaruna, let's get more mechanics. Let's get more twelve with party assist. Eleven. And let's get some more metaphysics. Alright, I can get... 
combat focus. Consecrated ground. Hammering thoughts. Lingering echoes. I'm going to get lingering echoes this time. 10% extra duration on my outgoing afflictions. Ah, good. Another weapon proficiency. Well, I guess it'll be regular crossbow then. Four accuracy is pretty fucking good. I might go ahead and turn on rapid shot. Certainly. Now we're at 59 accuracy, but 1.12.3. Aloth oh, cannot level up because he is like one experience away, basically. I am ready. Same with Palagina. Mm -hmm. But Shodi can level up. For her, I think... I'll get a little more Arcana. And... A little Insight. Uh, more Religion. She gets 4th level spells now. Oh, she's already got 4th level spells. She's got Devotions for the Faithful. the body, Hardy. Big triumph of the Crusaders. 
What other s weapons do we want her to learn? She's got two types of shields already. She's got hatchets. She's got crossbow. Maybe we'll take like flails for her. take flails. What do you and mean? Finally, a dare. He's level eight. learning a thing or two about diplomacy. Resistant to dexterity afflictions. Uh, we're going to go Oh, we want to go sword with him. Hmm? So if he wanted to, he could... Oh, that's a lot of deflection loss. to go. What's up, Caleb? Who's a good boy? Thirty-six thousand for the next level. Still using this same plain little hunting bow that I started the game with. Everybody else has got all kinds of cool weapons. I'm like, hunting bow. Not even a fine hunting bow or a exceptional hunting bow, just a hunting bow. So what am I doing now? Not that, not that. Not that, not that, not that. 
Not that. Also not that. Also not that. Also not that. That, maybe. Find Persa. Return to Martino. Let's go find Persa. So we've done virtually everything we can do in the actual Queen's Birth District at this time. Go up on this bridge here. Is my formation correct? It is. Now we'll go back to the gullet. We can go directly to the hole. That's convenient. There we go. Streperously bouncing hand, I mean, not hand, I mean, red circle thing. Okay. Hey. Oh, no, this ogre was here before. I'm here to find... Persa, Zili's cousin. See what Fierna has to say. Need something? What you need? Let me know if you see. She sells cheap ale. Not a ton of it, but I'll take what she's got. Now that the giant ogre cook is gone from here, the place just isn't the same. Why clean the dish when I can scrape the food off? Ew. This is such a nice place. Really classy. Still don't have any reason to talk what to Seduzo, dude. Me? What's your business in Nekataka? Nearly done, I hope. I sold a consignment of iron and cultural coral, and will return to Rautai with Vorals, Merkberries, and Andra stars. Shifts in her chair, tugging at her conspicuously clean and bright clothes. Odd that you take your business to the slums, unless you're trading illegally. She sets her glass down with a loud clatter. <laughs> The Royal Deadfire Company would uh, frown on business in this district, but there's no harm if they don't know. She laughs nervously. What is your business with me? Oh well. Hey, thanks for that host, Bloodluster. Appreciate that. Auto host, as it were. Oh yeah, there's a creepy ass fifth rack here.
I don't know where this Persa is. I don't know where this Persa and I'm looking for is. Probably in here with this dodgy animancy shit. Nope, not in with the dodgy animancy shit. Not in here either. What do you require? Oh, that's the OCD guy. Where the fuck? We're trying to get information about a Valera plot against Izali Bardado. Zeli said his cousin Persa was involved in something. And we're trying to find out what, but so far we've found no... Before I leave this map, let me just make sure. Maybe out here on the little balcony or whatever it is. Maybe here we will find what we seek. But will we? That is the question. Nope. We sure hey, hey, won't. Puffer. Oh yeah, we found a dog here. One of the many, many places where we found a dog. We got so many animals. Go back downstairs. Taduzo, Harami. Plus Imp, Zara, Relax, Bayer. An armored man stands by the far wall, observing a more light clothed woman as she busies herself with a handful of wires. The room falls silent, and you find yourself the center of attention. We've no intent to disturb you. <laughs> Please carry on. Fire? I don't know this one. She nods toward you. We ask not to be disturbed. What are you doing here? He grips his weapon and studies you closely. Aren't you one of the Bardato guards? Well, that's the end of subtlety. Oh, they are plotting. Bayer readies his weapon, his features hardening in a resolute expression. You told me you weren't followed. It's Ali can't know that I was here. Bad news for our new friend. He clenches his jaw and advances. Bayer hefts his weapon to square off with you while Persa scrambles for cover. Who am I gonna dominate? Looks like it's gonna be Bear. Oh, 
and he is dominated for 23.6 seconds. This guy is being very rude back here. Ouch! Palagina, so hard hitting. So hard hitting. So, oh, all of our battle buffs must have instantly gone away. So much for that. You feel like the engagement don't work properly, enemies just run past you like they just don't care? Well, most enemies and most characters don't really have engagement unless, unless you have a specific thing that gives you engagement. Vault schematics. I shall. All right, good night, Sin. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for hanging out. Thanks for hosting me. Appreciate it. We'll see you next time. You have a pit called Pumpkin Eater? <laughs> nice. I think I found all the information I'm going to. Hopefully that's enough for Azali. This is a crudely drawn map of the vault underneath the Bardado estate. In spite of the rough schematic, notes, timetables, and arrows detail the patrol routes of guards with startling precision. Ah, I see. So that's the information that that guard was selling to them. You... you killed him! Let me go, and I won't say a word about what happened here. Ursa's voice quavers fearfully, and she's rooted to the spot as if paralyzed. She has little to gain and much to lose from crossing you. Show mercy, Watcher. Yes, Percom Blanca, show mercy. The Bardato sent you, right? No need to kill me over a family tiff, eh? Relax. What's your part in the Bardado job? You're clearly not muscle. I just check for traps. Belder and her crew are the vault crackers. Not my line of work. This job? I'm out. It never happened. She slaps her palms in a dismissive fashion and folds, holds them out Belder's to you. Belder's plan was for everyone to converge on the Bardato vault. You won't find me anywhere near the Bardato fortune. Can we agree that that's worth sparing my life? Get out of here. I... I think that would be best as well. Consider me gone. Alright, so I have the information I need. I need to go back to Azali. And I need to go back to Martino.
And now Palagina and Aloth oh. have leveled up. take Spirit of Decay. That'll help more penetration with his uh, Necrotic Lance. And I guess he'll take Wand as well. Palagina. Get some more athletics. Some more insight. So she can either get an upgrade to her flames, which would be good. She can get. She needs to get another invocation. Now maybe I could just wait until Ertle and Girdle, because you know we're going to be all about summoning them dem ogres. Where's the paralyzed one? Ah, it's here. Isn't there one kind of like that? That's. Yeah, this one. There's a paralyzed cone. Let's grab that. Or we'll just wait for Ertle and Girdle. And we'll get... Get Aegis of Loyalty. It may save us. Alright, now so now she's gonna take Pike.
And since she's now proficient with Pike, he's gonna take these gauntlets, give them to her. Happy to oblige. Yes? Tell me. sure about that. If she turns that on, right now she's doing 24 to 33. She's doing 27 to 36. think so. Unless it becomes necessary against a high deflection enemy. This is my me sneaking ahead of the party in stealth. Keep it down. Stance. And the other formation is our normal tank in front stance. Look so fucking cool. All right, let's get out of here. Gullet. We're going to go to the Valera estate first. <clears throat> then the Bardado estate second.
wonder what time I started streaming. I can never remember. Am I supposed to play nanny? They listen to you, Martino. Enough. We have a guest. Where's Martino? He was literally just talking to Martino. Where the fuck is Martino? Oh, he's down here, strangely enough. Trouble sleeping, watcha? Me, I sleep like an infant. Yeah, well, get the fuck up because I have a quest to turn into you. Nap time's over, pal. Good night, watcher. We can speak in the morning. Okay, sure. Don't you waste a bunch of my time. Motherfuckers. There they are. I no longer hear the perverted anthems of Rawatai echoing across Queen's birth. Martino nods with cautious approval. The Royal Deadfire Company sailors are gone. A shame that sailors cannot stop themselves from throwing the first punch. He unceremoniously tosses you a sack of coins. His interest already elsewhere. Stick with me and you'll be on the winning side when the dust settles. He favors you with a grin. Infighting only strengthens the Royal Deadfire Company. Merla, you and my father are too alike. Go on. I'm still waiting on word for the next job. You have a few days to decide where your loyalties lie. Ooh, Valera sails. I wish I hadn't just spent a thousand buying those other sails. Before becoming privateers, the Valera family were proud sail makers. Valeran sails were known for using a strong but light combination of linen and cotton that did not sacrifice speed for durability. Martino has no further work for the time being, though he suggested that I check back in a few days. So these sails are 5 speed, 5 travel speed, minus 2 health. 5 speed, 5 speed, plus 5 health. So speed should stay the same, 55, 60, but health should go up to 72. I mean, I was looking at the wrong thing. The 25. Nice. Well, at least I can sell these cotton weave sales back for 200. My time is free to give them. What would you Either you have good news, or you have ever indulged at the tavern. Attila raises his eyebrow and beckons for you to continue. I want to talk to you about the Bardatos. If we must. What is it? Azali wants to strike a peaceful arrangement. After everything that she... Madiko, what is she planning? You're not considering this? The Bardatos have nearly ruined us! Enough, Martino. 
I will not let our families tear each other to ribbons while I can avoid it. Tell Azali to meet us here. I wouldn't be lured into a trap. He nods to himself and glances around the state of his house. Adu, what brings you to the hole of the Valeres? Tello opens his palm. Tello has agreed to hear Azali out. I can head back to Azali Bardada once I'm ready to kick off the talks. But I'm gonna go back to her and talk to her about the sinking feeling and see what she says about that. All right, so let's head next door. Family can't My face like still hurts, but not as badly as a sword through the gut. Back to Azali. My intelligence speaks of agitated whispers in the Valera household. Azali sets aside her paperwork and glances your way. I want to talk about the Valera plot against your house. Have on, then, and don't leave me in suspense. She leans in closer, her eyes boring into yours. Bear, one of your guards, conspired with the Valeris to rob your vault. A sickle of a smile spreads from cheek to cheek. Now we know enough to sidestep this particular trap. Here, your deserving pay. He sets a bag of coins upon the desk. I suggest we allow this heist to play out as intended. We will watch as our enemies walk into a trap. This will be the end of the Valera's short, ignoble reign in high society. Just talk to Atello. It's not too late to solve this peacefully. It most decidedly is. I have no use for a faint heart. Find me when you come to your senses. Hmm. I informed Azali Bardado of the plan to rob her vault. She's poised to strike against the Valera family should I agree to assist her. Speak up. My business never sits still for long. About this feud with the Valera the family. Atello doesn't make my affairs any easier with his wayward ambitions. I spoke to Atello. He's willing to meet if you are. You're serious? If this is some Valera trick, I'm not walking into a trap without keeping an eye on you as well. I'll be back. So... 
I think it's best to, uh... I told Azalea about the plan to rob her vault. She's eager to turn the tables on the thieves. Looks like things are going to get bloody in a hurry. Yeah, we don't want that. Also, she gave me a hull. <coughs> so now I'm sad about buying that as well. Support beams crafted from the wood of several Delamgans allow for a lighter weight system which allows the ship to sit higher on the water. While the construction process is illegal in many ports, the design is sturdy and light, allowing for greater maneuverability in the ocean. So I kind of lost some money there, but... 19,000, I could actually buy that ship now. Oh, they expect more money per day as they ra raise higher rank as, as so sailors. I mean, that makes sense. It doesn't surprise me. just didn't know that that was how that worked. The sea cow. Let's see if we can get them to uh, make peace now. Speak up. My business never sits still for long. Azali plants one hand on her hip and gestures for you to speak. Fratello doesn't make my affairs any easier with his wayward ambitions. Azali motions for you to continue. Let's head over to the Valera estate now. Very well. If nothing else, this promises to be entertaining. Let's see what happens here. What kind of a mess this leads to. Bardado and Valera representatives stand arrayed around the dining table wearing expressions of anxiety and resentment. The temperature of the room suggests no more amity than when the discussion began. I'd like to open these proceedings with a prayer. Before you can finish your sentence, Atello cuts you off with a hard wave of his hand. You run your bank like a crime syndicate. Some of us struggled to tell the difference. Atello points an accusing finger across the table. We can take it up with the director any time you feel like explaining why your children are intimidating my merchants. Zali opens her palms in every way composed. She glances over at you and her mouth turns downward. I see our would-be mediator has arrived. Well, we're here. I hope this wasn't some elaborate, ill-advised jest. I would not willingly welcome a Bardato beneath my roof for the sake of a jest. Halajina, any wisdom to impart? Maestra and Maestre. As you know, the brothers of the Consualias are often called upon to help mediate conflicts between the Dukes, the Consualia Sejia, and the great houses of the Republic such as yours. I would not presume to suggest your quarrel will be easy to mend. But Diverus, during my service I have seen much bloodier feuds mended with time and patience. I have also seen the wrath of the Duke's spells, turned against those who would cloud the skies of our nation's fortunes with their vendettas. I urge you to seek a remedy for your injuries that produces a lasting peace for all our sakes. Good job, Palagina. She dips her feathered head respectfully. Aloth nods, a quiet smile etched across his lips. What a surprise to hear courtly speech under the Valera roof. As Ali glances at Atello. You Postenagos hearken to the songs of an armored bird. 
Martino aims a hard look at Palagina, but it promptly softens under the assault of her glare. Quiet, Martino. Watch her. Now would be the time to lay out your reasoning. With an omen poem, he gestures for you to continue. I've made allies of former enemies before. I think we can all pull together into a stronger force. Ach, raise the stir in the White March Mountains. The same could be done here. A force? Watcher? To what end? Azali glances at Atello. I want to help the Huana of this city. I'd like the company to be an earnest ally. You hear more than one person laugh, including Martino. Atello, however, only looks surprised. I know well enough, Gold. He smiles thinly. Atello, I hadn't realized you had a soft spot for the natives. Zali's grim expression fades for the brief duration of the slightest twitch at the corner of her mouth. Atello, you let your children lash out at the Bardados. What's your goal? My goal? To wring out a little respect from this feud before we go under. The company will bleed us dry. We give our lives, our loved ones' lives, and they don't lift a finger to help us. The Bardatas turn their backs. Why shouldn't I teach my children to walk with their heads high? As Ali frowns, looking at him skeptically. As Ali, why shut the Valera family out of trade? One does not arm the competition. Besides, lesser people have made more of themselves without the aid of banks. As Ali stops herself, seeming for the moment to doubt her own convictions. And the pirates? Vagabonds. The only thing I'll say for Atello is that he is a son of the Republics. I'll treat him like any enemy of note. I'm amazed you can say this with a straight face, Azali. You were a gold-packed knight once, weren't you, Azali? Once you owned the castle, things change. Zali, don't you know a chance at profit when you see it? Yes. Yes, I do. Zali narrows her eyes suspiciously. You make a living putting the right people to work in the right places. I'm not sure where I was going with that. What suits the Valera family? She hesitates, her mouth tightening to a thin line. They are possible sailors. She waves her hand in a dismissive fashion. Atello, you'd like your ships restored? Of course, but... Atello's about to say more, but Azali cuts him off. I want the Principi out of the trade lanes. What? Half of this month's shipments are missing. I'll give you coin and crew for five ships to earn back my investment. She opens her palms and awaits his response. Six ships. With six, I will drive the Principi from these waters like rats from a fire. Atello straightens his spine and nods with confidence. Six ships. I believe we just made a deal, Valera. Then it's settled? Atello sounds bewildered by his own words. So it seems. For the time being. Azali shrugs. Time will tell if this arrangement is a favorable one. My hosts, you'll excuse me if I return home. She inclines her head, favoring you with a bemused look on her way out. Nice. That was really cool. That was a good quest. I was able to convince Azali Bardado and Atello Valera to see reason and bring their houses together in a profitable alliance. This should improve their fortunes along with that of the Valian Trading Company operations in the region. Oh, 
Oh, the Valian Trading Company likes me a lot now. Never saw myself breaking bread with a Bardato. Never saw myself breaking bread with a Bardato. With our new capital, the fleet can be fully restored by Monsent. Atello strikes his chin and nods. Here. You may count yourself as one of the family. That grants you the right to this blade. He passes you a fine sword with the Valera crest etched on the hilt. Ooh, he gave me a cool item. Farewell. Adu, what brings you to the Hall of the Valeras? Atello opens his palm. Better that the Valeras run our fleet against the rocks than suffer peace with our enemies. Artino crosses his arms and grimaces. You're welcome. If the Bardatos want our protection, they will have to deal with us on fairer terms. Some meager consolation there. He shrugs. What will you do now that the rivalry is over? If the Bardatos are serious about financing our repairs, then the Valeras will be back at sea in no time. From there, we do what we do best. Hunting Principi boats and waving at the crew as they sink. Good luck. Oh, look at this sweet sword. Duskfall. It's exceptional. Plus one penetration when attacking the same target as an ally. Minus or plus 15% action speed. That's just lovely. This sword is forged of an Emiran alloy known as black steel. It is particularly well balanced and sits comfortably in the hand. Black steel is both lighter and more flexible than traditional steel, giving the blade excellent spring. Accuracy of the first attack. Wow. Ooh, plus 20 deflection for the first 15 seconds of combat is so good. Need a carapace. Misses to grazes. crit damage. It can be superbized. Okay. It's nice, but I don't think he's going to use it.
Maybe he will use dust fall for now. It's pretty nice. Now let's see what, uh, see what Madame Bardado has to say. You've brought us peace in a difficult time. Thank you. Our family could do worse than make peace with such accomplished foes. You're welcome. I know I'm pretty, pretty great. Hmm. I never thought to see a Valera on my payroll. It's all these sighs over her paperwork. I have not forgotten my debt to you. The Bardato Vault is crowded with enough heirlooms that we won't miss this one. Passes you a handsomely crafted mace, grinning as she hefts it with ease. Sweet. She did give me a weapon. Bardato's Luxury. The Bardato family rose to prominence centuries ago, and they control a sizable percentage of all banking, shipping, and debt collection throughout the Valian Republics. They are a lineage known not only for their great wealth, but also the opulent way they parade it. This gilded mace, for example, represents the lavish display the Bardados make even of their weaponry. While ornamental in style, this is no simple bludgeon. It is masterfully crafted and a capable instrument of battle. It's an exceptional mace, 5% chance to sicken target for 10 seconds on any hit, and it grants nobility. Resistance to con afflictions while unarmed, unharmed, or healthy. That's pretty nice. Death and taxes, 10% sicken. Party. Self when an ally fights unconscious. Grants nobility and grace. Constantly restores health while bloodied or near death. It's a second chance for fit on health when health when hitting. Untouchable. Immune to con while unharmed or healthy. It's pretty fucking cool. I don't know if anyone in my group would really use this.
I don't really think so. Anyone who potentially could would be her, and she's got her sickle. sell that for a lot of money. I kind of love the idea of somebody dual wielding these. The the family weapons of the two families that were rivals dual wielding dual wielding them would be kind of cool. But no. How do I split stack? Okay. Speak up. My business never sits still for long. Alright, well, we've made the two families happy. Both of them granted me a very nice weapon. I gained a lot of XP. The alien Trading Company is quite pleased with us. I 
in the ancient temple. and services. Back to the prince, Hasongo. This is no longer above my level. I don't know what to do next. I think I'll finish. Sort of exploring and, and stuff in, um. So I'll finish exploring and stuff in the, um, the gullet. See what else there is to do here. But that's probably a pretty good thing to do in our next episode. Next episode I'll finish exploring the gullet, see if there's any other quests I can get here, see if there's any other quests I can resolve here. Um, see what else is going on in this, in this zone. After that, I'll probably head back out to sea and go do some quests around on the various islands and stuff that I have. But we'll see what we can do here in the gullet next. Then after that, I'll have to decide which one of these I want to go to. Whether it be the Sacred Stair, or Perika's Overlook, or the Serpent's Crown. Or the Brass Citadel. Haven't done anything for the Rawatayans yet. I am intrigued to go to the Sacred Stair simply because there's allegedly a Temple of Gone there, which I know... Shodi would probably be interested in, and possibly Adair as well. I think we'll do everything we can in the gullet. Then head out to see and do, like... Maybe even go to Hasongo. Um, maybe go talk to Captain Furante. Probably not, though. We'll hold off on that. Maybe, um... Go check out Poco Kahara. Explore the Tikawaran Islands. Go to the temple here. We'll do that for sure. 
maybe um the cornet's call is no longer double skull to me either so i could do that do the pokokohara stuff um i don't know how you actually leave the town Oh, I guess maybe you just go here and you hit leave city on foot. And then it just automatically takes you out to the island that the town is on. And then I think after I finish some quests here in the gullet or whatever I can do with the gullet, I might have a little more money. I'll probably sell Bardado's luxury and then I'll have enough money to buy that ship, the new ship, and still have a little comfortable padding of money left over so that I'm not completely broke, you know. Having the new ship will be nice. Maybe. I mean, I hope it'll be nice. Yeah, so right here is what I'm going to call it for tonight. Pretty happy with the progress we made. We got a lot of stuff done this time. And it was good times. I'm really enjoying this game a lot. So. Let's quit up out of here. And, um, if you're watching on YouTube, this episode is now over. So thank you for watching. This has been Josiah Plays Pillars of Eternity 2, Deadfire.